What's up today boys and girls? Today we're going to show you how to use HP tuners, VCM scanner to troubleshoot and diagnose a misfire. And what a better thing to do it in than a 6 liter LQ4 swap square body. And I left the manual transmission in and I was questioning myself an awful lot on, you know, what needs to be adjusted on the tune, which is a whole different, you know, program on the computer, what I'm going to show you today. But um, to say the least, I had a low end misfire in a high load situation. So like, you know, taking off on a hill, <clears throat> when I'd first start letting the clutch out to take off, it would kind of have a pop, pop, pop to it. And doesn't really make sense because as you see, I have nice tailor wires. I got brand new spark plugs in the holes. I have the good plastic coil packs on the motor. So I started with the easy stuff. I have a spare coil. So I just stuck the spare coil on, tried that. But the trouble was, is I didn't know which cylinder to try. So I was just shooting in the dark. So with this low end misfire, my experience with GMs is a misfire is usually always caused by something mechanical, whether it be the injector, the plug wire, the plug itself, or the coil. But it's usually one of them four things, unless it's low fuel pressure, which I know it's not low fuel pressure because I've done a fuel pressure test before I get into this. So the trouble I was having is I've got a launch scanner here, which does read misfire data but it tends to read it slow, like it doesn't give you that live reading when it's happening. And with my launch scanner, I'm only able to watch, you know, three or four cylinders at a time. I can't watch all eight. So what you wanna do is just open your VCM scanner up and you'll notice I have misfire currents, all the misfires here for a V8 engine. And again, we're using an LQ4. But what you wanna to do to get these channels is you wanna left click and you want to left click add channel and when it brings this window up you want to get on your keyboard and type in misfire and when you do that it's going to bring up all these windows which you see the ones i have highlighted are the ones that are already over here on my graph and you have to do this before you start scanning make sure you're not scanning when you do this or it will not let you add the channels but with this V8 LQ4, we're gonna add all these. So I done that. And then what you wanna do is you wanna hit start scanning. Key your ignition on. It'll take a second to load up and connect. So there we have it. Now if I just jump in the truck here to start it. I was getting the dreaded P0300 code and I do get a little bit of misfire action when I'm off the throttle coasting and gear but other than that um, what my trouble was when I took it for the first test drive is it was picking up a lot of misfires in cylinder 2 so and you could watch it literally when the truck is the second the truck misfired this system picked it up immediately so when I was driving down the road when I was experiencing my misfires you could actually see it here live instantly right in front of your eyes and it was pointing me at cylinder two so I came back grabbed my coil pack stuck it on cylinder two took it for another drive I was still getting lots of misfires on the same cylinder so what I ended up doing was, then I changed the wire, and of course on these all Chev LS engines, it's 1357, 2468. So two is on the passenger side, front cylinder, and I have had the injectors out and cleaned them, put them back in, and it's still giving me this number two misfire. So we put a plug wire on, took it for another test drive, did the exact same thing. 
So when I got home after the third test drive and testing the few simple things, I then said, well, we know the trouble's in cylinder two. And just to rule out, when I put this engine in the truck, I did compression test it when I first got it going and warmed up. So I know the engine has compression, but you should, um, you know, if you're in doubt with that, you should definitely double check if you're having a misfire on a cylinder and you can't get it figured out. But it kind of stumped me because I cleaned the injectors yesterday, put different ones in that were low kilometer and looked to be very good inside. But um, anyway, it kept picking up on cylinder two. So I pulled cylinder two injector and there was no dirt. Usually when the injectors fail in these trucks, um, they're full of dirt right up to where they meet the fuel rail like the inside of them will literally be right full of rust And when I took this number two injector out, it actually appeared to be quite clean inside, but they have been sitting in my building for a while So I ended up taking some transmission fluid And I soaked the thing down. I know the bottles dirty, but the fluids clean inside But I give it a soak down an ATF and I filled the injector with ATF and I moved it from cylinder two to cylinder four and I put cylinder four injector in cylinder two. And if the injector would have stayed not functioning, it would have moved my misfire back to cylinder four. But luckily uh, the ATF was able to clean the dirt or debris, whatever was stuck into it, got it freed up and now the truck is driving great and now i realize that there is no issue with the tune um basically from the auto to the standard transmission all the tuning is you just switch it to non-electric because the old standard transmission has no sensors or nothing on it and like literally the motor runs great now and i'm very very happy finally got the knots and kinks out of it and it's working the way it should but if you guys have a P0300 code and it doesn't seem to be leading you anywhere and it's not giving you an individual cylinder, see when a coil fails, it'll usually tell you which cylinder it is, like 0301, 0302, whichever cylinder is the last number. But when you get a 0300 and it's fuel related, it won't actually give you the P code of which cylinder it is. So then you have to go with live data which today was my first time using this part of the scanning software um, in this VCM scanner. Normally I just use this to watch, you know, my airflow, um, my spark. Uh, I showed you guys an earlier video when I showed you how to set up a wideband. So this is basically the stuff I watch when I'm taking a vehicle for a test driver or if I'm tuning it. But since this time we had issues, um, I got to add these channels in, try this out. And again, like this system is just phenomenal how, um, how good it is and all the tests and stuff you're able to run. I did a crank relearn on the truck last night because I thought that might have been my issue. And even with the standard transmission, the crank relearn was simple and easy to do. But anyway, again, I rest my case. 99% of the time with these Vortec motors, it's always, always injectors messed up. 99% of the time, you know, if you're one of those guys that you change your plugs and you have good wires, I mean, fire is pretty much ruled out at that point, right? But again, <clears throat> try the easy stuff first. If you got a spare coil laying around, you know, it's pretty easy to snap one of them on and try that stuff first. But Again, my personal experience with these, <clears throat> those injectors will bite you every time. And sometimes even when you clean them and you think they're good and the ohm test good, they're actually still not good and not flowing because there's dirt stuck beyond what you're able to see inside of them with your eye. So uh, probably in the near future, I'll just break down and put a whole new set of them into it if it continues to give me trouble. But this is the best the truck has worked since I've uh, had it back together 100%.